Hello everyone, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Noctropolis. Now, uh, last time we left the theater to go heal up in Liquid Art Pool, but you'll note that uh, I'm back here, because I did not quite uh, finish exploring around here. I didn't want to risk running out of time. But, uh, it turns out there's a little hidden secret here that we saw with the uh, bulge in the costumes. Holding your breath against the dust, you part the row of costumes and push them toward the end of the rack. Your intrusion disturbs several clothes moths which vacate the rack in a chaotic flurry. It also reveals a low door. Well, let us open that low door. And we find ourselves backstage, accented by the veiled panels. The wood door is marked by scratches and splattered paint. Can we open that? It is tight and sh yeah, locked and tightly shut. Let's see. Paint can located near the boiler. A can of dried paint has been grouped with others like it. The trio of brushes are hopelessly stuck in the can of dried paint. And never know, I might need a paint can. Despite your best efforts, you cannot pry the dried lid from the can. Hmm. Wonder if that screwdriver might be. Uh, actually, I've lost the screwdriver now. Apparently. Whether there's some kind of a tool around here. Located high above the door, a collection of prop swords and spears is ranged on a wooden weaponry rack. Chipped and stained with paint, the floor's boiler room has doubtlessly played host to countless scenery and set constructions. Stuck to the floor in a puddle of dried paint, the old plywood box was probably used by a scenery painter to reach the high, hard-to-reach areas of this flat. Boiler. Menacingly dominant, the monstrous galvanized shell of this theater's boiler sweats and hisses dangerously as it converts water to steam. A control wheel regulates the valve's water pressure. Or we can play with that. There's no reason to turn the water on right now, so presumably there is some reason that we would want to turn the water on. Painted black and coated layers of varnish, this wooden pedestal supports a similarly finished sphere. Can I pick up the sphere? Can't take that. Can I take the weapons? The weapons, while potentially useful, are out of reach. Despite your best efforts, okay, try as you might, you cannot pull the paintbrushes three. Yeah, very cleverly hidden here, somebody has left behind a flathead screwdriver. I didn't just save the screwdriver from before for some reason. So yes, I now have a screwdriver. Can I use the screwdriver for some reason? You pry the pins loose from the hinges on the door. Freshly mortared, a barrier wall of bricks prevents passage. Can I move the bricks? Try as you might, you cannot move the bricks with your bare hands. But if we look down here on the floor amidst the gray, you'll see that we have a hose. Gabbered like a snake awaiting its next meal, the water hose falls from its valve, the valve connection in a loose pile. Can we use that? That won't move. The pipe won't move. You turn on the high pressure hose. The hose won't move. Can I get the hose? You pick up the hose and direct its powerful blast toward the newly built brick wall. Clearly, there's totally an obvious reason for doing this. So, yeah, we find ourselves in uh, Building Brace. Anchored by a concrete footing, the fortified steel strut was designed to shore the theater's lower structure. So we're... Uh, Scoured by Agent Ware, the concrete foundation represents a bridge of transition between Octropolis and the hostile domain of Subterranea. A mean-looking gang. Oh, let us talk to the mean-looking gang. Nice outfit. Where do you think you're going, man? My, it's a nice, ethnically diverse gang. Of the sort you will commonly see in bad parts of towns. Did you see anyone go through here? Maybe. Maybe not. Listen, you little punks, there was a blonde-haired woman. I need to know where she was taken. Yeah. That'd be a bit more uh, realistic for a superhero movie, but uh, 
you may have noticed, I'm kind of not a good superhero. So, let's go the adventure gaming route. Listen, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. What are you? Some kind of sicko pervert? No, I mean, maybe we can help each other out. What could you have that we possibly want? Hmm. How about a knuckle sandwich? If you give me help now, I've got something to give you later. How about... I have bling! Man, we don't need that. I have sharp, pointy objects! Hey, excellent. They look like Master Whisperman's knife. He's gonna like them. Maybe enough to promote me. Don't count on it. All right, we'll let you live. But get out of here before we change our mind. What about the woman? Did you see the woman go through here? That kind of info is gonna cost you. How about this? Bling! Cool, man. I look like one of them rich guys. All right, tell them. Yeah, we saw her. She was tossed to the back of one of those tricycle cars. Do you know where they took her? That was none of our business. I did know that they had a logo of the downtown butcher shop on the side. Thank you. I can't travel from here. Okay. Can I travel from here? No. travel from here. No. I can't go to the switch, but I can move to it. Please tell me I can travel from here. Finally. Now, unfortunately, downtown butcher's shop is not specific enough to really help me out here. So, we're going to have to go pester uh, the... Because I'm sure that the uh, news guy knows, you know, downtown butcher shop. What do you need now? I need to know where the butcher shop is. Oh, we got a new comment here for the Whisper Man. Don't know nothing about that. Incarnate died next to their high-tech company. The whole thing went up in frames recently. Observatory. That place hadn't been used in years. Funny thing happened just the other night. Someone tried to steal the lens of a telescope. They're guarding it now. Why would anybody want a giant lens? Why indeed? Oh, hey, I can use my mouse wheel to scroll through all this. Don't know nothing about that. Sunspire Tower, Drillmer, Butcher. He stops by every morning and buys the day old papers. Using them to wrap his meats in. He's got a shop over on Edwards Avenue. Yeah, there's no other way to find out where this guy is apart from that. But hey, long as we're here, let's go to the Hall of Records, harass the clerk, and see what he can tell me about uh, all the new topics we've uncovered. What else can I do for you? You can get me off. Wait, wrong character, sorry. Alright, let's go to the very ending on this. It is the vision of Dynatech, a technical development company that recently burned to the ground. Asked about him before. Uh, Opera House next. Nothing on record for that. Whisper Man. The only reference we have is in connection with the observatory. He constructed it, then disappeared after the clouds became too thick to stargaze. Okay, there's information on the greenhouse, and that's pretty much it. So now we have the butcher shop as a location. Although why there's a fly for the symbol, I have no idea. But uh, rather than go there right away, let's go ahead and check out Incarnate Technologies while we have the chance. Because you know it's not like our partner is in uh, in trouble or anything. Let's uh, talk to the security guard here. All right, there's no loitering here. Say, a dark shear suit. Never thought I'd see that outfit again. Not Don Knotts, but an incredible simulation. Well, if I go down to Mount Pilot, I'd check in a picture show. What happened here? Uh, looks like someone crossed the wires. You know where to find Dynatech Industries? You're looking at it, buddy. Please, what's left of it? Hmm. You know where I could find the person who took over the Incarnate Technologies division? 
I'm not sure who is over that division. But I hear that the general manager, Jim Drake, you know, that's Martha Drake's boy, has been spending his nights over at a bar named the Neon News. You might ask him. Are you sure of that name? Yeah, I'm sure. He signs my paycheck. Now you move along. Bravo. Bravo character actor who played this guard doing the Don Knotts impression. You have you have done well. And gee, I wonder the animated neon sign this display announces the location of the neon noose bar. Well, why the heck not? Let us see if we can walk that way. Wow. That uh, definitely looks like the kind of place that would be called the Neon Noose. Silhouette against the Rose Illumination, Exotic Dancer offers voyeuristic entertainment. Provocatively rendered and plated in chrome, the stylized female figure serves as support for the circular terrace above. Conically arranged, the display of multicolored liquor bottles flashes and scintillates from the center of the bar's island. Okay, enough of the decor. Oh, what the heck. I know there's got to be some smart response for this. You reluctantly bend the impulse to fondle the student's fluid anatomy. All right, let's talk to this schmuck. I should just look at him first. Instead of on drowning his sorrows, an ill-tempered man mourns his losses at the neon noose. Are you Jim Drake from Dynatech? Who wants to know? The guard of the building gave me your name and said I'd find you here. Off this building, do you mean the pile of charcoal briquettes? Do you want anything else? My ice is melting. I think it's melted already from the look of it. I want to speak with someone from Incarnate Technologies. So would I. Incarnate was a new division of Dynatech, still under development with a team of five people under Dr. Nunio Schwartz. Their one and only project was for the new Sunspar Tower. The fire specialist determined that the fire started in their wing, but every member from the Incarnate team is missing. That sounds suspect. What were they working on? That's classified. Mr. Hero, do you want anything else? My ice is melting. No, I hate to be responsible for watering down your drink. Thanks for your time. Who'd want to eliminate Schwartz and his team? Do I look like I'm wearing a badge? All I know is my building, my job, my future burned to the ground a week ago. Now leave me alone. Uh, let's see if we can keep talking. Do you want anything else? Perhaps another of my half-assed Christopher Walken impressions. Okay, let's see what you can tell me about. Metropolis. the city is going to hell. Darkness is falling over the city of night. Dark chair. He used to protect people like me. Now where is he when I really need him? Saludo. I heard, so heard she's found a friend in a bottle. Maybe we should get together and have a real party. Popper Desmond. Yeah, go figure it out, another religious guy. No, no, sucking the sickness. They're constructing that monster of a building, the Sun Spire Tower. We made some high-tech equipment for them. It's something to do with lighting. Hmm, lighting. Sam Jenkins is who called in the order. He really didn't know what he wanted, so we had to build it from scratch. I don't think he liked the project very much. Uh, Miss Shoto, she's the brains of the sickness operation. She handled all the technical questions my guys had on the units we were building. Didn't have much of a personality, though. I blame the writer. Doesn't know anything about the butcher or the villains. Flux, I heard his name mentioned once or twice around the office. He didn't sound like a nice guy. Yes, because uh, construction firms and electronics firms often discuss people with one-word names. Sunspire Tower. We made some invasive stuff for the place. It's all gone now. Nothing left. Observatory. Years ago, we built some of the timing mechanisms used in the telescope. The place has been closed for years. Uh, let's see. Whisper Man. He's the person that helped us build pieces of the telescope years ago. He dropped out of sight when the clouds came. I thought I heard his name mentioned once at Cygnus. So, yeah, we've got a gang leader who built an observatory. 
uh, being a film, the country that got burned down, a bunch of technology that's all has to do with making light going into this tower that the villain who broke out the super villains apparently has something to do with. Okay, uh, Incarnate. That was the high-tech division of Dynatech. They were working on a light-twisting theory. There were some good men working there. They're all gone now. It appears from the fire investigation that the fire started in that division. It was the beginning of my end. And Jim Drake. I've lost everything. I don't really know what I'm going to do now. Well, I wish I could help you, but... Uh, from here... Guess we got nothing left except the uh, butcher shop, so now we can get back to the serious business of rescuing our uh... boy. He's putting us all into this performance. Recently cleaned, the empty pork carcass waits to be butchered. Deeply engrossed in his work, the butcher is cutting meat and sweeping it, sweeping it into a pile with the cleaver. I'm not sure that's really sweeping, but... What can I do for you, huh? Yeah. I'm just looking. Oh. Well, you just give me a holler when you find what you want, eh? All day long, all I do is chop the meat for the people. And they just want to look around. <laughs> oh, bravo, bravo. A delicious looking sausage sits within a tr the tray for the scale. Hmm, I wonder. I cannot take that. I cannot take the wall. <laughs> what can I do for you? Do you own a tricycle cart? Well, see, yes, I do. My delivery boy, the new one, he uses it to deliver the meats to the people, huh? What do you ask? It's not the other day in Subterranea. We don't have any deliveries down in that dark place. You must have been mistaken, huh? You must have been mistaken. I cannot talk no longer. I have much work to do. These people. They think they know all about my life. It just pisses. Love it. Large wrap of cellophane. Can I get cellophane? The butcher's threatening gaze suggests you leave that alone. I can't take the scale. Do you make your own sausage? Do I make my own? See, yes I do. I take all the leftover meat, put it all in a big bowl, then I jump, and I jump, and I jump, and jump, and jump, till you cannot tell what she is no more. Then I add a little salt, my own special seasoning, stuff it all in a nice sausage skin. Orale, it's good. Would you like them? What ethnicity are you trying to play? <laughs> yeah, I'll take a half pound of sausage. That would be two dollars. That's not bad for sausage, really. I don't have any money. How about a trade? Well, maybe I will trade. What you got to offer, huh? How about... Well, you know... The uh, newspaper vendor said that this guy did take newspaper wrapping his meat in, so... Oh, that is, that is just what I need. I ran out of paper to wrap my meat. You got a deal. Yeah, you should always be very careful when wrapping your meat. You grab the sausage. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he, he will stop me from trying to grab the cellophane, but he will not stop me from going into his walk-in freezer. And I'm going to just grab a meat hook for no readily apparent reason. Affixed with a wooden handle, the hook aids in the lifting and manipulation of frozen meat. Disembowel, this frozen carcass of beef hangs rigidly from its hanger. Hmm, 
I get the feeling that there's something else uh, hidden here after what we saw with the uh, costumes earlier. You see the hard mound of beef slide down the bar. Hmm. Ascented by icy belt, the freezer wall is worn by worn panels of stainless steel. Hmm, can I move that stainless steel? That won't move. You see the hard mound of beef slide down the bar. Moving the carcass reveals a ladder. Hmm. You're just in time! <laughs> Woo! So sharp! Much sharper than, say, Estiletto, for instance. <laughs> oh, queasy, eh? Interesting. Why don't you join us, Yorkshire? The fun is just beginning. <laughs> Definitely a lost, a lost cousin of the Insano family. You hear a hissing sound as gas fills the air. You begin to feel very dizzy. Your eyelids closed for so long, I was about to cut them off. <laughs> Let's see, best word stiletto, if you cut anything else off of her. Yeah, because it's a little unclear, but he cut her finger off. You know, from the angle, I can see right up your nose. You're going to cut me once more of that gas. No worry, you haven't missed a thing. Why, I wouldn't dream of believing that you're thing of her amazing digits without your participation. Because this is all about participation. Huh. Time to like her remaining burdensome digits where they are. But Kembap, if you keep this up, you'll rattle my nerves. When I'm nervous, I tend to get stuffy. Why, I've even been known to remove things unnecessarily. Shut up! I don't allow yelling and surgery. Most of my patients do. If they express otherwise, I cut out their tongues and let them gargle blood. Huh. Inquisitive, eh? Anxious to get started? I like that, you know, victim. <laughs> I've decided my tools are too sharp. I prefer that my instruments deliver a ragged, rinse flesh. And they file down some of my sharper implements. I'll be right back. <laughs> Now's our only chance. When he comes back, I guarantee we'll both lose more than a finger. Okay, well, I'm walking wounded, but I've got some time. I wonder... Let's see what we've got. Beer corrosive acid occupies the corner of the instrument tray. Uh, scattering of needles and bladed instrument occupies the surgical tray. Equipped with wheels, the cart supports a metal surgical tray that brushes the side of the, your gurney near your feet. Hmm, I wonder... You view the rusting, dirty instruments of disgust and decide to stay as far away from them as possible. Can I move the acid from where I am? The beaker of acid shudders or shatters on the floor near Stiletto's gurney. The acid dissolves the wheel break in seconds. Okay, that generator. In case of a cubicle metal housing, a portable letter generator is prepared to fulfill Master Macabre's extra power requirements. Uh, the left interior of Macabre's laboratory hosts a deficient array of pneumatic and hydraulic equipment. Master Wheel Lock. The Master Wheel Lock has been melted, allowing all four of the gurney wheels to turn freely. Then move the gurney. Okay, um, tell her to try and move. Now that only... Okay, gotta be something here. 
Now tightly within the jaws of the vise, the sharpened blade of stainless steel extends, extend, should be extends menacingly. Mounted upon the wooden table, the metal vise securely grips the handle of a projecting knife blade. Huh, wonder if I had something that... Well, I do happen to have that shard of glass. I wonder if I can cut myself out of it with it. That's of no use here. Not so much. Can I use the sausage? That's of no use here. Meat hook! That's of no use here. Okay, let's look at me. The wheels of the cold metal gurney have been locked into place to prevent the table from moving. Okay, the cart. Buckled securely, lever belt binds you to the gurney surface. Can I get the restraint? I can't take that. Can I move the restraint? Here. No kidding. The cop's vice mounted knife slashes the bonds on Stilo's wrists and legs, camming dangerously close to severing her flesh. We've got to get out of here. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, um. Filled with a circular porthole, the lab's middle door is streaked with corrosion. The pros floor is paved in cement. Can I get that knife? The knife is firmly held by the unrolling grip of the vise. The vise has been tightened to the point that you'll need other tools to loosen it. Hmm. Other tools like scrap of lace? No. Meat hook? No. Sausage? Yeah, no. Um, let's see, whatever tools have I got? I can now take the cart. Propelled forward by the flying equipment, the gurney has rebounded backward from the door before coming to a stop. Located instantly on a shelf, this dusty glass in here holds an unknown liquid. You take an empty chemical resistant glass beaker from the shelf. You feel one beaker should be adequate. I want all of the beakers! Okay, border protruding black ceramic trim runs along the wall. Any bladed instruments. Use the beaker here. Can't use the shard of glass here. Huh. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and save the game here because we're almost out of time on the camera. And next time, what does I hate to end on a cliffhanger? Uh, next time, we will come back, and we will hopefully uh, get our way out of here. See you then.